morning, and good everybody. Morning. Today is what is today? Today, today is January second, fifth day of the heavenly, of the twelfth month of the heavenly calendar. It is uh, today. Let's get the weather broadcast getting ready here. Uh, here, broadcasting live from the Cheniogung Palace. Welcome to the King's Report, everybody. Uh, the Kingdom Report. I am your host, the second king of Chenigug, Hyungjin Sean Moon. I'm told not to smile a lot today, so I'm trying not to smile. <laughs> be serious for, be serious for anti-communist news. <laughs> but today we have a lot of things to cover. We're going to start with God's word today, and I want to start today at uh, in Ephesians. We're going to start in Ephesians five and eleven. And it's an awesome scripture. It's an amazing scripture. It says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. By all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Now that's a very important scripture, especially for, especially as we cover uh, all the news and all the things that are going around the world, um, uh, to be able to expose darkness uh, in the, the evil is an absolutely essential aspect of learning how to fight for the good. But you have to be able to identify the evil, and you have to be able to obviously discern between what is good and what is evil for one to be able to stand up against evil. Now, the normal popular culture always teaches and brainwashes and doctorates everybody from media to popular music, from stars to Hollywood, to every, every other thing under the sun, into the philosophy of relativism. And relativism is a philosophy that forces us to relativize. Now, what does that mean? That means that, oh, it could be good, but also could be that evil thing could be evil, but it could also be good. Relativism claims that there are no absolutes, and by definition, thus, things are relative to, subje uh, to a subjective opinion. So things are not necessarily evil, or things are not absolutely evil. There is no absolute good. It's all relative. It's all in the beholder, so to speak. And we've become so... These sort of... Uh, uh, we almost take them for granted. We almost take them uh, as, as, as unquestioned truths. But the Bible and God's word shows very clearly that there is a gr vast difference between light and dark. That they cannot mingle together. That when light enters into the atmosphere, dark must retreat. And so Ephesians 5.11, there's, there's, there's even a tactical brand, I think. There's a brand that makes like uh, tactical clothing that's called... Tactical 5.11, I wonder if that company is related to Ephesians 5.11 because it talks about not having fellowship with evil. It talks about not having uh, communion, communion with evil, not commiserating with evil, not being enticed by evil. What is that old phrase that says the evil in the world is not a product of simply the evil people or evil deeds of humanity in the world. It is because good men stand idly by. <clears throat> and that has become a part of our society where the archangels and those in control and those who are engineering our social structure, engineering our uh, uh, educational systems are incessantly teaching us that we should Never take absolute stances. That those are dangerous things. That you must always take different perspectives on issues and not be able to, and no one, no one can, how dare you claim that you have the absolute reason, uh, the answer or you have the absolute truth. The picture of relativism is many times delineated and described in the ancient format by the story of the elephant. All of you have probably seen that. Maybe we can even drop a picture of that once we get our internet technology a little better and we're able to show you on screen. But we can, you can just, anybody can just Google it 
elephant and the five blind men. And that's the story, of course, of the elephant. And there's five different men that are touching the elephant. And each, men, each of the blind men are blind, obviously. And they are touching different parts of the elephant. One is grabbing the tail. And one says, oh, the elephant is absolutely a rope. One grabs a trunk and says, absolutely, it is a pillar. One grabs a, I'm sorry, the, one grabs a leg and says, it's a pillar. One grabs the body and says, oh, it's absolutely a wall. One grabs the nose and says, absolutely, it's a hose. One grabs the ear and says, it's absolutely a fan. Now, all the blind men are somewhat partially true, speaking truth. They are partially correct. But, the relativist claims, they can only see part of the truth. And I'm sure you're shaking your head now, and I'm sure you have heard this story. This story, of course, is a very popular one in Eastern cultures, particularly in Buddhist, Buddhist and yoga uh, or Hindu uh, traditions, that, which are dominant. And so many people in the New Age, New Age community will also use this as an example, a metaphor, an allegory of explaining how we should interpret truth or our epistemology towards truth, how we should know, uh, uh, know of things. With this relativist doctrine, the allegory and the, the metaphor in which it is presented, especially with the elephant and the five men. The problem is, is that although it claims to be open-minded, although it claims to be tolerant, although it claims to be seeing the larger seeing uh, a lot, the larger picture and understanding everybody's point of view and trying to say that it doesn't, that there are no absolutes. The problem with the relativist doctrine is that it, they are claiming, the relativist is, com, is, com, is claiming that absolutely all truth is relative. So it is making an absolute claim that all truth is relative. And thus, it is, become, it is an absolute truth claim. So the relativist, Upon actual scrutiny, upon the actual philosophical doctrine of relativism, you will see they are in fact claiming that the truth that relative young people are so inculcated with the open-minded, free society truth, which is not the, not the case. Absolute. Any religion's claim about truth is absolute, including relativism. Relativism is not excluded from that bunch. It also is claiming absolutist claims while, of course, hiding and pretending they are not. <clears throat> but the Bible is talking about the difference between light. And here in Ephesians 5, uh, you know, force-fed, like factory, you know, uh, force-fed GMOs through factory foods, through, uh, you know, processed foods their whole entire life, put through the edge of them, and they are by the time you and getting ready for college, before you become a debt slave, you are a walking Marxist, folks. Welcome to the United States. By the time you get out of college, you, by the time you get out of college, you are definitely, definitely a walking Marxist. But our culture has become so done down. These kids are thinking that they're fighting for social justice. Meanwhile, they're fighting for communism. They're fighting for Marxism. They are fighting for the fighting for the. They are fighting for the establishment of the archangelic realm, the satanic realm, the evil realm, which creates totalitarianism, which took, which creates censorship, which creates. Uh, no uh, varying opinions. It is an absolute horrible, dystopic uh, hell on earth that they are pursuing, but yet they are told that they are not, that they are pursuing social justice and they're fighting a great fight. Now, of course, we're not, there are some, there are some obviously uh, important social justice issues that were fought uh, with race and with Martin Luther King, etc. in the past. But the current social justice movement are nothing more than Marxists running around trying any form of conservatism, any form of ability to discern. Not even they shouldn't even be heard it, be able to hear it, because if they hear it, they may get triggered and they may have emotional breakdowns and they need safe spaces. People is doing social justice. Anybody opposite view or an, is against a Marxist view, they must be censored. No, folks. Marxism, communism, look at the 20th century. You can see with your own eyes, study history. The problem with these kids, they have not studied any history. They've been taught <clears throat> pro-archangelic, centralized, pro-centralist uh, ideology from the very beginning. 
We can even go to huh? music at that time. And then you just got to override. All right, folks, we're going to take a little break. Get a little praise gospel break on this morning. And we'll be right back after this. All right, folks, and we are back. Reporting. I'm your host, Sean Moon. Now, we were talking about Ephesians 5.11, and we want to move to Chen Sung Young's scripture. Let's get a word from our true father, uh, Moon, <clears throat> and let's get today's Rima from the Chen Sung Young. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, I'm on page 100, 184 of the uh, uh, English translation of uh, Chen Sung Young. This is the book on true parents. What is the reason our mind and body have failed to become one? What kind of person is God the Father? He is the vertical pendulum of love that forms the fundamental This pendulum tries to come down to earth. Even with God, in bringing down the love, there needs to be a force from the horizontal line that can pull this standard of love down. If there is a strong electric charge, a negative charge comes close to the earth. Lightning will strike nearby. It must come down. High up, it must come down. Likewise, if a high love is to come down, a negatively charged love must arise on earth first. If a negatively charged love occurs first, a positively charged love is bound to emerge automatically. This works in pairs. In the world of interaction, there are always responses and reactions. Things respond to one another, and they act and react to one another. Ordinary people say that a reaction opposes an incoming force, but this is not the case. A reaction protects the entities that are engaged in mutual response. Only in this mm. way is Ooh. everything to do. Only in this way is everything to do with good and evil logically resolved. Okay. Without discovering the logic that evil must be embraced by goodness, there is no way of guiding the history of confrontation between good and evil. Wow. Okay. The, 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 well, that, that, there was the second to last section you had there opposing, you know, forces. If we don't engage them, if we don't, if we don't stand up against them, they're able just to dominate and take over. There's always a human desire. There's always a human desire and maybe a, even a, um, a instinct to pursue a easier lifestyle. Right? It's easier in theory to not do anything and have the government pay for everything. It's easier, in theory, to be able to sit at home, watch TV, and play video games all day and be paid for it. <laughs> and be given away for it. It's easier. But, does it actualize your... to surprise yourself, to unlock new epigenetics, as a complacency. It is the nature the nature of the human spirit. It is the nature of our DNA to want to be able to create, to want to be able to produce, to want to be able to reproduce, right? That's what reproduce uh within the choice between good and evil. So that may what you actually have to be able to choose to either love God or hate God to choose to hate Him. But, love Him, and human beings have no choice, then we are simply robots. The electronic devices that automatically lock the doors. And I said, and I, my, my view as a father was no, I don't like that. Why? Because technology is wonderful. Technology can be used against evil. Can, technology can be used for God's side. Technology, we don't shun technology. Technology is a very important means. The internet, although there's evil things on it, there's a very important means to fight tyranny, to fight totalitarianism, to fight centralist government, world power, globalism, etc. It is a very important factor. Absolutely essential. At the same time, technology can make us 
Turn off the lights and brrr, all the lights turn up and oh Jarvis turn this on brrr, and all the lock Jarvis lock the door play, brrr, 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 and all the dumb young kids who are brainwashed and so dumbed down see that and say oh my gosh that's so cool no it's really not cool you see you have hands and feet and you can actually turn on a light with your own it's not really cool you know why because those AI technologies and we have the, even on Infowars had that had that uh, uh, show let's show let's show everybody the video but it's this AI technology that now Amazon is, you know, launching, for, it's on Echo and Alexa. You see how they give always these AI technologies, these little cute names. Hey, Jarvis. Hey, Alexa. Having our kids, you know, like uh, the whole the door lock system. We had our, you know, five doors on, on our on, on the front uh, on the first floor of this property, and you know the discussion was let's put electronic door locks on them. The conclusion to that whole thing was what? No, let's not do that. Let's all be responsible for the safety of this place, and that's how it is in the kingdom. What did Jesus say? The greatest commandment is to to love God with all your strength, heart, and might, mind. And spirit, but the same. And the second one, he said, "Love your neighbor as yourself." Look, if you protect yourself, you love yourself enough to protect yourself. What does that mean? You're also to protect your neighbor. If somebody's raping your neighbor, you don't just delegate the responsibility to somebody else. It, but society has become so dumbed down and so weakened. We become jellyfish. We become rights us and force us. Instead, we're taught all become more feminine, become less masculine, masculine, it's aggression. Hello, you see how aggressive they're always trying to push the vision of the kingdom MMA, <laughs> which unlock your epigenetics, which break you out of Muay Thai, wrestling, all those kind of things. Doing those things which help you unlock your ancestral path. Go and doing those things which help you unlock your, your innate power. Do you think God is impotent? Do you think God is God had to say, okay, oh, you, oh, you want me to lock the doors? Oh, no, you want me to lock, unlock the porno hubs, blah, 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 blah websites. <laughs> Give me a break. Technology is sometimes, of course, is good. God gave us the ability of creativity, and we are able to develop those things, and that is what humanity has created. It is the innovation and the, 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 the creativity that God has unleashed when human beings are able to freely associate, predict what you buy. It's you have all these things where you're, you're, and it has a uh, electronic toilet flusher. And one room has electronic shades, okay? They're not hand controlled. And I show my kids, and I said, that looks right. you press a button and it goes up. Wow, 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 it looks like a movie. I told them, no, not cool. Not so cool, kids. Not cool. The electricity was out, so now the toilet won't flush. And now it's getting You've given all. Let me back into the matrix. Come on. <laughs> All right, folks, we are back to the Kingdom Report. I am your host, the second king of Chanigu, Hyung Jin, Sean Moon. Now, where we're talking about the AI things, Tim brought up the article now on Drudge about vehicle kill switches to fight terror trucks in secret. Folks, do you know that every car you buy has about a $1,000 tax on it because... You, by international regulation, you must have a black box in your car which tallies all the, the miles that you are driving. And that's so that you can be taxed for carbon tax. You can be taxed for breathing. You can be taxed for producing carbon dioxide which actually feeds plants and helps plant growth. Because you have those centralists, you have the archangels, you have the global communists who are total psychopathic control freaks who want to mi micromanage every little thing that every human being does on this earth. In order for them to feel secure, in order for them to feel like they're powerful, in order for them to feel like they're worth something, they need to micromanage and control every little human activity on the planet. 
That is anathema. That is opposite to the nature of God. That is opposite to the nature of freedom responsibility. When you raise your child, you're not only raising your child, you don't micromanage everything they do. That doesn't help them learn anything. If you micromanage everything that your child does, that does not help that child become a fully functioning, independent person. It is through the ability to learn how to do something, to have some trial and error, to be able to try something and fail, to fall down and scrape your knee and get back up and not cry. To, 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 I remember when my, my, my daughter first started jujitsu training. And boy, you know, you know how the girls have their power over their daddy. And she was fighting this other girl. And daddy's there because I'm the instructor. I'm there. And she's, she's in this bad spot. She's in side control, side control and she's in a bad spot. So she looks at her daddy with these googly eyes that are unparalleled in the, you can, you, you can draw the cutest cartoons in the Japanese cutest little uh, cats that they draw with the sparkly eyes. The eyes are this big, right? And they're all sparkling and watering. <laughs> she got to use that technique on her daddy. <laughs> Thinking that that would work. Now, I know, obviously, emotionally, I can feel, okay, oh, my daughter is in a tough spot. And, you know, best for it to stop that stress on her. But I know that as a fighter, I know that as a person, I know that as a, as a woman, when she grows up, if, if she's not able to conquer these types of fights, these types of ordeals and situations, she will not be strong. She will not be able to deal with the vicissitudes of life. She will not be able to deal with the different issues of life. She will be, she will be handicapped. She will be at the mercy of the scenarios that come before her. She'll be at the mercy of the environment that comes before her. So what did daddy do? I just said, calm down. No, don't worry. You're doing good. Calm down. Okay? Remember? No, no, no. Focus, focus. Remember, crying doesn't help. You got to focus on, focus on your technique. Focus on your... Then she was able to fight out of that thing. Right? When we micromanage things for people, they, that, doesn't, that does not make them stronger. It, if we find our security in trying to micromanage we are them. Those are the things which slow humanity. Those are the things which lead us into totalitarianism. Those are the things that invite, invite the evil archangel to come into our lives. And this vehicle kill switch to fight terror trucks in secret development. Oh, yes, of course. Well, let all the migrants into the country. Let these illegal migrants come illegally into the country. Protect them as a protected class by the UN and by the different Western governments. Collude all together. Bring in, bring in uh, uh, backward civilizations to come in to implode Western civilization because in the end, we have to take down the successful nation states in order that all nation states can come under common rule and all nation states can come under UN rule and international governance or global governance, whatever way you talk about. It, it is mind control, micromanaging psychopathic control freaks that are leading the helm of this. And they are the literal physical representations of Satan on earth, those who are possessed by this worldview. God gave us freedom and responsibility. God gave us freedom so we could choose to love, so we could choose to create, so we could choose to serve, serve so we could choose to protect our neighbor, so we could choose to protect ourselves. All these kind of things, so we could help choose to empower our youth, so we could choose to strengthen them. But now you bring in the problem, you make the problem, you have terrorists who you know, you know these are war-torn areas, you're bringing 80% of the migrant population in some of these countries, are men, army-aged men. They're bringing in army-aged men from war-torn countries that are resentful towards the U.S., that are resentful towards the West, that see the West as the big Satan because the West has been continually hegemonic and been forced and been pushed, in, pushed into all these different wars by the politicians who are getting back pay and getting enriched by these wars like Dick Cheney and Halliburton going into Iraq after 9-11. Father Moon, true father, talked about not going to 9-11, not going to Iraq after 9-11, that America would be cursed if we went to war in those false wars. 
But now, because they have this scene set, now because they brought in all these people, and now because we now have, we've had multiple terror car vehicle incidents last year in France, this year, where is that? Nice. Nice, and this year we had another place. There was another one. Delhi. What was that? It was in Delhi? Delhi. We had another in Berlin. Berlin, yes, Berlin, oh, just a couple of days ago. Now we have to put vehicle kill switches to fight terror trucks in, in, in secret development. Folks, this is not to, kill, to fight terrorism. The war on terrorism is to control normal people. The war on fighting terrorists and giving vehicle kill switches is to, to be able to monitor your driving patterns so you can be taxed. So that if any, any phony politician has something against you, they can shut you down. You can't have any freedom. You can't go anywhere. They have now technology and cars which can drive themselves. Do you think that really is free? Any, any red-blooded human being on this planet wants that freedom when they're riding a horse. Any red-blooded human being on this, on this planet wants some freedom when they're driving a car. We do not want to be <laughs> chauffeured around. We want to be able to step on that accelerator and feel the power. <laughs> feel the power of that movement. We want to be able to be free. It is not human nature to want to delight in being caged. Because we were meant to be that have dominion over creation. We were meant to have dominion over the fowls of the air, over the fish of the sea. That was God's gift to humanity. Not for us to be in the cage, not for us to be in the bowl. You see that? You see that switcheroo, the switcheroo of the archangel? The archangel wants us to be, he wants what we have. He wants our inheritance, folks. Don't give it to him. It is, by, it is by individuals making the collective decision to say no to the archangels, no to the psychopaths, no to the sociopaths, no to the control freaks. Say no, 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 bad, bad, bad. It is when we collectively say no and we retain and hold our inheritance that we are truly free, folks, free. We are free. Liberty is such an important virtue because with liberty then comes love. If we don't have freedom, folks, we cannot choose to love. You have to be able to choose to love between love and hate or even indifference. I, I love these, these liberal professors say, well, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. Okay, well, let's see if that's true. You can't choose between love and indifference if there's no difference. If there's only one choice, then you are a robot. You cannot choose love. You cannot choose indifference. You have to just do what you're programmed to do. And that's, of course, what evolution and Darwin evolution and, 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 and you know, uh, biological evolution or the arguments for biological evolution try to argue that we don't have free will. They try to teach us, folks, from a young age that you don't have free will. Everything is predestined. Everything is already governed by your instincts and your uh, genes said to desire to reproduce and, and survive. No! It is now very clear, science has been showing very clear that epigenetics are real. That decisions you make change your genetics. We have free will. And it is the role of the people who are awake, it is the role of the people of God to say no collectively to the archangel. Stand up. Inherit your kingship. Matthew 25 once again said what? Come, ye blessed of the Father. Inherit the kingdoms prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That is our task, folks. We'll be right back after this break. What light? That's what Father talked about with the noontime sun. Father Moon talked about moon, noontime sun. The noontime sun brings light. And light and shade, light and darkness are anathema. Light and darkness are polar opposites. They cannot coexist. There will, when there is a bright light from all angles, there's shade runs and flees away in the opposite direction. If there's light on this side, shade runs that way. If there's light on this side, shade runs that way. It runs in the opposite direction, folks. This is the problem with evil. The evil seems so looming and powerful. Because people are so complacent. We are trained to be complacent. We are domesticated. You train a wolf to be domesticated so it obeys you and does not create havoc to your will. 
That's what the psychopaths are doing to humanity. You understand? They are domesticating you. They are making you into a puppy dog. So you do not have <laughs> your canines. You don't understand what your canines are for. You think your canines are for chewing a rubber toy. Your canines are there so that you have power and you can, you can uh, defeat a wolf. That's why those canines are there. All right, let me stop on these. I got to go back. I got to get, I got to cover. I got to cover the news. So let's get back to the news. Look at this, even on Dredge Report. Brutal year for internet censorship surveillance. I'm just going to read some of the headlines here. Carnage on the streets of Britain as revelers start 2017 with fighting, vomiting, and flesh. Did you see this? I mean, I saw this article last night. These people are just drinking. This has become a culture. See, folks, it is, it is full spectrum warfare on humanity. It is trying to replace real culture with pathetic culture. Real culture which builds humanity, which builds the human body and mind and soul. Real culture which strengthens us and makes us more powerful, and build more powerful marriages and build more powerful families and more powerfully knit social networks so that we can dominate this world and dominate these pathetic control freaks. It's all meant to give us culture which weakens us. All meant to give us culture which makes us come discombobulated, confused. That's why my father always told us not to drink and smoke. Because you do those things and it discombobulates you. It discombobulates you. What is that? If you're, if you're, if you're driving, if you're drinking, even, even sleep, right? If you're, if you're driving a car, you, you, you are, you are um, being tired while you're driving is just as being drunk and you... It's when you're driving. And everybody knows how dangerous it is when you're drunk and driving. Look at these people on the streets of Britain. These girls got their clothes. They don't even know what they're doing. Laying on the street. Drunk. Laying down. Totally passed out. This is not cool, folks. Kids, it's not cool. It's dumb. It's dumb. It's stupid. You're not cool if you're laying down half naked on the cold floor being rained on and people looking up your private parts it is not cool you're not trendy you're not modern that is such a pathetic culture T tell me how do you get stronger because of that how do you become more empowered because of that how how do you ladies become more empowered by getting yourself drunk and being exploited you're not empowering yourself you are putting yourself into danger you are purposely putting yourself into a choke of the highest level Gracie, Gracie brothers on your back with a matalayon around your neck. And you're saying, oh, I'm come right into that. That's not going to end well for you. Do you understand? Ladies, that will not work well for you. Look at these people completely vomiting. One guy is, look at this picture. One guy, this guy is on a pile of trash and he's so wasted he is in Britain this is 2017 and this man is on a pile of trash with soiled pants drunk out of his mind and this is the culture this is the culture we're supposed to look up to this is the culture our young kids are brainwashed to believe is cool hey you know what's cool you know what's cool What's cool is be able to unlock your epigenetics. You know what's cool? To be able to actualize your potential. You know what's cool? To be able to see all the God, gifts that God given you and be able to actualize them, bring them into materialize them into reality, bring them from the immaterial to the material. You know what's cool? Be able to hike Himalayan mountain. You know what's cool? To be able to trek 30 miles through the wilderness. You know what's cool? To be able to make a fire in the woods. You know what's cool? To be able to drink fresh air and eat pine needles. That's cool, folks. That's real. It's not real. It's not, it's not real to live in an AI world. It's not real to live in your goggles, your Google goggles and the video games now that are coming out to supposedly give you greater, greater technology. Those are things to domesticate you, folks. You have, what is it? They have monkeys. They have monkeys in laboratories that are, that are watching TV, mesmerized by the TV. That's how they start, study what are known as flicker rates. They have monkeys that are watching TV there. They want to know every which way to brainwash, how to, how to keep the eye engaged because they know that the eye will move 
this and many that, that times in every three seconds. They know that your attention span is actually less than a goldfish. Human, human behavior, behavior studies show that human attention span is about six seconds. We can't hold the attention span. We can't hold anything. Why? Because we don't engage with reality anymore, folks. We engage with perpetual marketing. We engage with perpet perpetual advertising. We engage with per perpetual monopolies. Hounding us day after day with protective technology and all those different things to force us to bring, in, to bring into their system great prosperity and wealth that they are not developing, that they are exploiting from your creativity. It is not cool to be a part of a culture which is drunk out of their mind, vomiting and half naked on the ground, being rained on. That is stupid. You're going to get hypothermia. Do you understand? <laughs> You're going to get sick. You're going to wake up with a cold. You may wake up with an STD, folks. That's not cool. That is not cool. Gonorrhea is not cool. Syphilis is not cool. AIDS is not cool. <laughs> you understand? All this free sex culture, which you're told is cool, and the communists love to push as being empowering, it's not cool. All you get is sex ridden. All you get is emotionally dissatisfied and destroyed. All you get is a lower sense of self value. All these things are meant to be replacements for real culture. Real culture would help build you. Like, you guess what? Like having strong human bonds, like having a powerful marriage. Do you, know, do you know how addictive and how much of a high you can get from a powerful, powerful marriage? Do you know the type of uh, electricity and the type of energy and the type of unbelievable power you can create in a powerful marriage? That trumps getting wasted, half naked, being rained upon in the streets of London any dang day of the week. Any day, any day, to have a beautiful marriage, to have, a be have beautiful children who respect you, to have a wife who respects you and a husband who loves you, to be skillful in marriage, to have amazing intimacy, amazing sex life. That is, that trumps all this insane fake culture which we're force-fed every single day and taught that's what's trending cool. No, you know what's cool? You know what's cool? It, what's amazing is for Two people, a man and a woman, who have saved themselves for the sole purpose of meeting, of, of, for their meeting and their final covenant of marriage. And the ability for them to remain faithful to each other, to be honorable and to be powerful in their commitment, that is super cool. You understand? That's super, super cool. Because it's those things which help you Defeat evil. It's those things which help you succeed. It's those things that draw prosperity to you. You are being taught all the behaviors that expel prosperity from you. You are being taught all the behaviors which expel success from you. You are being taught all the fake culture that gives you failure. And then you're supposed to sob about it and then cry about it and pretend like you're in some emotional drama. Oh, I'm so poor. And then go on a self-pity tour of yourself. What is a Grinch on Christmas? He has a, oh, two, I have a 2 o'clock appointment with myself and self-pity. I have a 3 o'clock appointment with myself. And, oh, wonderful. At 4 o'clock, I have more self-pity to do. Folks, this is meant to weaken you. Break out of the trance. Resist evil. What does the scripture say? Expose it. Don't have fellowship with darkness. Shine the light. The light of God will shine away the darkness. It'll push it away. You got to trust in it. We'll be right back after this break. All right, folks. Welcome back to the Kingdom Report today. All right, I, I made my promise. I made my promise to my tech crew. And we're going to read the, we're gonna read the, uh, the headlines, okay? Here on Dredge. North Korea preparing ICBM test. That's no new news. We hear that all the time. They're always preparing there. Ten-year-old girl used as a human bomb in Nigeria in New Year's Eve attack. All the news, always, whenever these things happen, did, did the person scream, Allahu Akbar? Did the ten-year-old girl who's used as a human bomb in Nigeria? Let's see. Let's see. Did you hear about this story, Tim? The girl walked towards the crowd, but she blew up before she could reach her target. 
Now, who's taking responsibility for this? The girl was clearly not more than 10, and this could have made her too nervous, making her make you do things. The boogeyman can't be used to make you bow to their regulations. The boogeyman can't be used to make you bow to their micromanaging and their incessant spying and their illegal activity. If you are not scared of the woods, if you are not scared of the nighttime, and, and you are not, you don't, you don't, you're not afraid of the sounds of the night. You are aware of your environment. You know that at night the bears are not going to come and try to eat human flesh. You know that the stories of the bears eating and the cougars eating everybody are, high, are hyperbole. They're highly exaggerated. There is less, there's more people who die in car accidents, more people who hit, who hit deers while driving a car, more people who slip in their bathroom shower while taking a shower and die than be eaten by a bear. And yet everybody is super scared about going into the woods that they may be eaten by a bear. Look, anybody who's done bushcraft, anybody who's done survival training, anybody who's slept outside in the woods, in the wilderness, the bears don't even get near you. The bears hate campfire. They hate the smell of wood. If they hear a human being, they are already gone. They're gone. The normal bear. Now, maybe bears who live in a community there where there's trash all around and they can feed off the trash. Okay, maybe they're a little more used to humans. And that's where you have problems. But in the wilderness, give me a break. Bears, as soon as they smell you, they can smell you from a mile away. As soon as they hear you, they will be running for the blueberries. They don't want you. They don't want to eat you. They All right, folks, we're back. The Kingdom Report, if you're joining us now, we were talking about IS. Of course, there's been a New Year's attack in Istanbul in the nightclub. 39 people killed. IS linked Amak news agency said that the attack was carried out by a heroic soldier of the caliphate who attacked the most famous nightclub where Christians were celebrating their pagan feast. It said the man opened fire from an automatic rifle, also detonated hand grenades in revenge for God's religion in response to the orders of IS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The group described Turkey as the servant of the cross and also suggested it was in retaliation for Turkish military offenses. Look, folks, we know that the normal Muslim person is not radicalized in that realm. It's not ready to blow up people. We know that there are good people who are professing Muslims, but this is a problem. The, the Orthodox Muslims, the radical Muslims, who we call in the West, radical Muslims like the Saudi Wahhabis, who are Orthodox Muslims, they are practicing their religion as their founder practiced it. They are the ones who see Western Muslims who are on TV saying, oh, you know, we're modernist, the majority is modern Muslims, or Indonesia is different from, you know, uh, 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 different countries in Africa that are Muslim. Those people in the West, the Orthodox Muslim Saudi Wahhabis see as heretics. They see them as watered down Muslims. They don't even consider them to be Muslims. You who are, who are doing apologism, apologists for Islam are not even considered Muslim by those orthodox powers who, of course, the West is supporting, who, of course, the West is gaining funds from. It's been very clear that, not only through the WikiLeaks, but through the Clinton Foundation, that Hillary Clinton was receiving, what is it, 20% of her funding from the Saudi Arabian government? Are you kidding me? This is the government that, quote, is so empowering, I guess. I guess it is the bastion of feminist uh, freedom and women's rights. Yes, ladies, you're not able to drive a car. Yes, ladies, well, because the government is so compassionate and so pro-women, you can go to the uh, carnival once a week and drive some bumper cars, and that should be able to release your stress of not being able to drive a car. Be happy with that. Be grateful. Be grateful for your pro-women Saudi Wahhabi leaders. This is the insanity that you're living in, folks. This is the reality that you are living in. Insanity. 39 people dead. And Valerie Jarrett of the Obama presidency, wow, one of the chief advisors. Look at this weird woman with this, with this weirdo haircut. Obama's closest advisor says, this is reported by the New York Post, president has been scandal-free. Oh, yes, President Barack Obama has been scandal-free, is what Valerie, what is her name? Jarrett. Jarrett is saying. 
President Obama has been squeaky clean, according to his closest advisor, Valerie Jarrett. The quote, the president prides himself on the fact that his administration hasn't had a scandal and he hasn't done something to embarrass himself. Oh, you mean like starting six plus wars in the Middle East and like killing tens of thousands of people in Afghanistan? Like lying to the American public saying Obamacare wouldn't inflate your prices and it goes up five times on average? Like saying there's no death penalty on Obamacare when there's right there and even the, what is it, the Yale professors out there bragging and laughing about how there's death panels? Oh, like Obama supporting Hillary Clinton, the, inc the incredible war criminal who receives money and has stolen 93% of her money raised from Haitian, Haitian, poor Haitian black people. Oh, like black unemployment under Obama. Next year, $20,000. Oh, yes, and we're supposed to see this is the best health care system in the world. Wow, we were able to, we were able to make fat and, and allow all the big insurance Foreign insurance companies take up all the money. Meanwhile, our normal doctors who are trying to make a living can't even make a living because they have to be forced on Obamacare. If they're not, they're put out of business. Talking about scandal-free, we've become the most socialist country in the world under Obama. We are no longer on the top 10 most free economic societies in the world. Congratulations, you're scandal-free. You've just destroyed this country. You've destroyed liberty. You've destroyed you. You've put us under the UN Security Council. Obama in 2011 was not only president of the United States, he was also the head of the UN Security Council, which, which is, goes against Article 1.9 of the Constitution, which doesn't allow you to have that con type of conflict, conflict of interest. Talking about there's no scandal. His whole presidency has been built upon scandal, upon lies. See, this is the, this is the thing, folks. See, good, normal good people, whom you know in normally life, who do normally, you're, you're the person who does the fruit market, the local fruit market, the, your local farmers, you know, the, 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 the person who comes and does your plumbing. Normal people are not out to screw other people. They understand the idea of free trade. They understand that if I give you value, you're gonna, give, you're gonna pay me for that value. If I help clean your toilet, or if I help fix your plumbing, you're going to pay me for that in a fair, in a fair way. I'm not going to try to exploit you. You're not going to try to exploit me. This is a difference between a normal person and a predator. A predator wants to maximize, maximize the amount of resources he can steal and take, or she, and wants to minimize his risk, minimize his, what he has to give up. So instead of thinking, I want to make a fair trade, he thinks, how do I maximize everything I can get and how do I minimize everything they can get? And I'm not talking about only by a couple percent. I'm talking about like the Rockefellers or the Rothschilds who go in and literally rape, rape, resource rape nations like African nations, like what they're doing in Europe or what, what they're trying to do in America. These are organizations, these are entities, these are archangelic forces on the earth who, who pr pray and vampirically suck off the creativity and success that good normal people bring. Their enemy is the middle class. All these things, bring a radical jihad in, opening the borders, all these things, force feeding us, you know, deleterious and poisonous toxic foods, dumbing us down, all these things are to do what? to bring us to our knees, folks, to bring us down, to not have powerful culture and civilization, to not have powerful families and marriage, everything to be relativized, everything to be discombobulated, everything to be made confusing. Oh, there's now 72 different genders? What happened to the biological male and female? What happened to biology? What happened to science? They claim they're scientific, yet they make 72 different types of genders. Well, you might as well say, oh, the oak tree is another type of gender, and you might as well say that I'm a maple tree, I'm another type of gender. Stephen, Stephen, <laughs> Stephen Crowder, who is a great, he's a funny comedian, he went into Walmart and different establishments <laughs> talking about his transgender dog. And he brought his big dog, who's a 100-pound pit bull or something, <laughs> into, into these establishments saying, oh, 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 she identifies as a man. <laughs> 
And then he had Not Gay Jarrett, who is his co-host, Not Gay Jarrett, going before him, carrying a small little po poopy doll, a little, little puppy, you know, small dogs that we have, <laughs> too. But a small dog going in every, oh, so cute, it's so cute. And like Olive Garden and all the, uh, the different restaurants let the small dogs in. But as soon as he brings in the big dog, he shows how tolerant they are. And they're so tolerant because he's saying, well, she identifies as a male. So he actually goes to Target and he goes, tries to go into the woman's restroom. He says, oh, it's not for me. I, 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 I identify as female. And so does my dog. My dog identifies, uh, my dog, I, I'm sorry. My dog identifies, identifies as a male. I identify as a female. And then you have literally him and Target, the manager come out and, and come say, well, uh, can you please use the uh, men's room? And he goes, no, I'm sorry, I identify as a female. And he is a male. He has a beard. He has big muscles. He, he's a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Steven Crowder is. His dad is a purple belt in the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Insanity, folks. They want to discombobulate you so you don't have any power. They want to discombobulate so your family breaks down. They want to discombobulate so you don't have strong marriages. They want to make you weak. And by making you weak, you're easy to control. We'll be right back. All right, folks, we're back. Welcome to the King Report. Wow, we've been talking about all sorts of things, covering the news. Look at this. On New Year's, there are new regulations on guns, phones, and soda. We are such a, uh, a progressive society, we just have to make more and more regulations for all our uh, wonderful people every single year. The Obama administration this year, I don't know if you, can, you guys can find that, but the Obama administration this year created 97,000 plus pages, 97 thousand plus pages of regulations are you kidding me 97,000 pages of rate of their year and regulations you got to be insane that is more than a novel what is that 97,000 pages my goodness a novel is not a thousand pages that is a tome that's a tome that's a freaking lord of the ring grim lord tome 97,000 pages. You can't even fit that in this room, 97,000 pages. These are the types of regulations that, they, the, that the elites put on you so that you can't start a business. You have to, you have to spend $200,000 to open up a fruit shop. You have to pay $200,000 to get through all these regulations to open up a candy store. They don't want you, sell, they don't want you selling jelly bellies. They don't want you selling... Whatever it is, you know, apples and organic fruits. They don't want you selling anything. They want you to, you know, folks, when you go to communist states, there are the government-sponsored businesses, which is basically the elite's friends. And there's only one CVS market. There's only one monopoly. There's not CVS and Rite Aid and different competitors and different pharmacies. One market. That's called a monopoly. This is what they want. By increasing all the regulations, it just destroys who? Who does it destroy? It doesn't destroy the monopolies. It's good for the monopolies because they're the ones who can afford the big lawyers and the big, all the accountants, the army of lawyers and army accountants. They can get them the stupid loopholes. It's like these total arrogant demons, George Soros and the Rockefellers and, and, and the Rothschilds and all these, well, Warren Buffett, these people who pretend that they're for increasing taxes on normal people paying their fair share. Meanwhile, they don't pay any taxes. They get through all the corporate loopholes. They have the army of lawyers that they can hire to get through every single witch loophole out of the 97 plus page, thousand plus pages. You know who can't get through the 97 thousand plus pages? You or me, a normal sized business. That's who cannot get through it. A little mom and shop pop pizza place. They can't get through the 97 thousand plus pages. A little deli shop can't get to the 97,000 plus pages. A little shop, mom pop shop fruit, uh, you know, fruit stand can't get through the 97,000 pages. You can't even create a farm market anymore. You can't even put up a farm stand. You grow organic, healthy foods that are not packed with weak psychopaths that rule the world and are being led by the powers. That, remember, the Bible says we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities apart. Pillars, principalities, and powers, and rulers of the darkness of this world. Who's creating the darkness? 
Who is creating the destruction of civilization? Who is creating implosion? Who is lying to the public and saying Obamacare is free when it's, it raises your prices by three times on average, three to five times on average? Who is saying it gives you more choice when it gives you no choice? When you be taxed every year, 500 dollars to $5,000 now, going up next year to $20,000, Trump must get away. He must get, take away these regulations. 97,000 plus regulations. Who does that suffocate? That doesn't suffocate the big boys. That suffocates the small guy. That suffocates the middle and small size businesses. That's, that stifles entrepreneurship. Why? Because the elites hate you. They hate you. They hate competition. They hate people who want to fight. They hate people who want to compete. They hate people who've been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and are used to competing and know that they can beat up those pathetic, weak monopolists who have to use archangelic power and centralized power to force their way and force everybody to buy their products. We can destroy them and defeat them. Why do they make all these regulations on smartphones and guns? Look at this, folks. Berkeley, California, new, oh, impose a new sugar tax. California with a new sugar tax. California imposes tougher gun laws on the first day of 2017. Now it's illegal to sell most AR-15 style rifles with removable magazines or ammunition clips banned as assault weapons. California also has banned, last week, now, I saw that on news the other, way, the, the, the other day, California is banning the ability for police to arrest a minor for prostitution saying that they don't want minors to have that on their records. Are you kidding me? You're allowing pedophilia, you dumb bozos. You're allowing girls of 12 years old now to sell their bodies. Many times they're, on, they're pushed on drugs by their drug handlers and pimps, forced to be drug addicts and then sell their bodies. Many times they're kidnapped. And you're making laws with, quote, good intentions, with this idiotic, idiotic, which are now allowing, not allowing police to actually enforce the law and not giving incentives against women selling their bodies at 12 years old, let alone other predators who want to buy girls that are 12 years old and 14 years old or whatever. This is, of course, pred this is the same California that is trying to, which is now moving towards pedophilia. We talked about it before. We talked about it. How the homosexual agenda leads to the transgender agenda. The transgender agenda leads to more deviant sexuality. And there's this type of sexuality, this type of sexuality, and this type of sexuality, and that type of bestiality, and there's a, this type of sexuality. And all those have to be okay. And of course, the kingpin is the pedophilia. And of course, they gotta make that legal because that is what those elites are into. We know it from the royal families of Britain and the Jimmy Seville case from the BBC, the superstar who was best friends with Prince Charles. And then after he dies, these 500 plus people come out saying that he raped them, that they were trafficking children to the royal family. We know that the elites do this because they can get away with it. Historically, the elites of the past of Satan's kingdom, they are satanic, they're demonic, they are pushing centralized power. They are preying on the weak. That's why the kingdom of God is different because we have God as our father and God as our father actually loves us, see? He's not like these fake little tentacle, little disgusting little goblins, George Soros who say, oh, I love you, I love you. Let me come and destroy you. Let, let me come from my hungry Nazi collaboration and, 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 and selling out Jews and saying that that's the best part of my life and coming to destroy your country and implode and exploit your riches and resources so I can inflate my billions of dollars. These are the people that actually fund race wars in this country. These are the people that fund $35 an hour to do protests against Donald Trump and get to get people radicalized like Black Lives Matter and, and MoveOn.org. These are things that are funded by George Soros, who has a fake, fake nonprofit organization called Open Society when it's a close, when he wants a close, when he wants a close monopoly. These people are the masters of lying. They are of the father, the devil, the father of lies, folks. They lie to you calling their, calling their nonprofit organization Open Society when they are fighting for communism. 
when they are fighting for a society which monopolizes everything and power and money to them. All these regulations don't help the normal person. NBC News reports that. NBC, NBC News does not report the fact that what I'm saying now, they're reporting about the regulations. Crazy, insane. Stop the regulations. Get rid of them, Donald Trump. Free the people so that the normal man can start fighting and competing and unlocking the epigenetics and bringing prosperity and success back to the U.S. and back to the world. We'll be right back. And look at the operators. Look at the operators. Look at the hands and feet of Satan on this earth. Promoting disinformation to blind humanity, to blind normal people. So that collectively they choose to give up their free will and to obey and submit themselves to the father of lies and these liars. Pulls fake story on Russian power grid hack. was Russian sanctions. Although the IOCs included common malware and widely used uh, network IP addresses, network administrators were encouraged to examine their systems for evidence of malicious activity. Infowars, who broke the story and then later carried on drudge, became, began inv investigating the report, confirmed with members of the cybersecurity community, and quickly determined the claims to be false. While Infowars and Drudge were caught, which carried uh, Infowars breakdown, correctly reported the false the claims, the facts, I'm sorry, the facts, countless other media outlets continued to parrot the false claim. CNN, MBC, MSNBC, NBC saying, oh, Russian hacked, Russians hacked, Russians hacked the uh, malware, Russians hacked the Vermont grid. They sh down there are attacking us now. They're using cyber warfare to, to use EMP pulse warfare. Oh, my God. This, of course, after the fact that George Soros funded people to start riots in the U.S. trying to get Donald Trump out of here, trying to start literally violent riots. That man should be arrested as dictatorial, but it's better than being raped by the, these George Soros's and, and Rothschilds. The U.S. needs to get rid of these evil, pathetic, slimy, spiny, you know, spineless, selfish, narcissistic, exploitative monopolist. Get rid of those fools. Stop putting 70 plus thousand pages, 97,000 plus pages of regulation on the normal person. Stop lying to the public about Russian hackers. They come out, the Obama administration comes out saying, oh, it's Russian involvement, Russian hacks, Russian hacks the elections, right, with no proof. People from the FBI, people from different intelligence agencies, the head of the intelligence agencies come out and say, we have no evidence for that. It's too premature to make those kind of conclusions. But every single media outlet owned by and pushed by George Soros and the big conglomerates push the same message, parroting the same ridiculousness that Russia hacked Vermont and shut Vermont down. Why? Because it's all part of a trope. It's all part of a trope that in combination with the Christmas, surprise Christmas bills that Obama passed, which uh, essentially allowed the government through the NDAA to censor media and censor broadcasts and censor opinions that are opposed to them and call them Russian propaganda. To censor Breitbart and Drudge and Infowars and anybody else who's saying, who's pro-America, who's pro-freedom, who's pro-sovereignty, who's anti-establishment, they are Russian agents. And so you have to create the story and the narrative. You have to create the, you have to, Obama kicks out 35 plus diplomats, Russian ambassadors, that's unprecedented in the history of America. We didn't even do that in the Cold War. With 20 days less than 18 days, what is it, 19 days now, left until the inauguration. And they are scrambling like chickens with their heads cut off, running around trying to implode this country to start World War III with the Russians. Thank God the Russians 
are saying, you know what, Obama, you're pathetic. You're a political corpse. You're a political corpse. That's a quote. You're a political corpse. You're crying because you lost the election. You're crying because we don't want to start war. You understand, folks? Russia has the GDP of Italy. It is not a superpower. It has, it, it has hit rock bottom 17 plus years ago. It has hit the bottom of communism and totalitarianism. They don't want to go back. They've been under the stupid EU system in Russia. They've been under the stupid globalist system in Russia. They've been under that. They understand what communism is like. They don't want it. They're people like you and me. They don't want to be under tyranny. They want to be free. They want to be able to freely associate. They want to be able to start businesses. They want to be able to live happily with their children and pursue God and religion and freedom. They don't want to be controlled. The micromanagement is being spied on. And every single camera, every, every single step you take is watched by a camera and recorded by an audio system. There are human beings who want to be free, who don't, who want to be, who want to feel the wind in their hair. I may look like I don't have hair, but I have hair. I can feel the wind through it. These people are despicable. They are there literally trying to spread different disinformation. The father of all lies is their father. They do come best to, they do bows to him every day. They do his bidding. They are paid. Their organizations run. They feed off of the public's ignorance. And they are paid to lie and disinform the public. Because in the end, if the public is disinformed, they are easier to control. They're easier to engineer. They're easier to use herd mentality on and herd psychology to bring to a certain end goal, which is, of course, centralized communist power, folks. That's what it always is for these control freaks, these elites. It's Satanism. It's Satanism, folks. It's Satanism. So in the end, they're so powerful, they can not They can steal your kids in the middle of the night. They can send child protective services, steal your kids. They can take them, rape them, and send them into child trafficking, and you can't do jack squat about it. That's how North Korea is, folks. That's how Iran is. That's how go that way. Liberals out there, all you progress. Do you really want to pass down that kind of land to your people, to your children? To the rest of humanity do you really want to put humanity into that well if you do you are anti-human if you do you are anti-progressive if you are you're anti-liberal you are a fake you are a whoremonger you are a fornicator you are an adulterer you are pathetic and you are weak because you don't have any compassion for your fellow human man. You have no compassion for your fellow human being. You have no love for other people other than yourself. All you want to do is exploit everybody else so you can monopolize everything else and then exploit all your pleasures and your, all, all your hedonism. Because in the end, that's why, that's why we know you do this. So you can be hedonistic and you can be above the law and have pay no taxes and steal children in the middle of the night to do what you will with them in their in your demonic human sacrifice you satanist we know who you are we see you the darkness is exposed as 511 says have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them we know and we can see you plain as the light of day because what does it say but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light therefore he says awake 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 you who sleep Awake those, awake humanity, awaken humanity. You who are destined to be in the bosom of your father. You who are destined to be powerful and to rule and have dominion over this earth. Not so you can be arrogant, narcissistic monopolist so that you can empower other people to be responsible and have dominion and stewardship over this earth. So you can pass it down to your generations and you can help them unlock their epigenetics and be all that God wants them to be. You don't get that. You don't get that from the archangelic propaganda that is force-fed down our throat all the time trying to create World War III with Russian hacking. Give me a break. One good thing about hacking is that a couple of days ago the Bilderberg website was hacked and some good hackers went on the Bilderberg website telling them, you better make your meetings public or we will continue to hack you and we will destroy you. <laughs> now that's some good hacking. That's some good hacking. This fake Russian hacking stuff, give me a break, fake news, CNN, MSB, you're pathetic, you're pitiful, you're the corrupt news network, you're the crap news network, you're the Clinton news network, we can see who you are, you will not win, we'll be right back.
All right, folks. Welcome back. We're going to close up today. And here's our brief. Uh, here's the weather report. Look at this. The beautiful Chanigong Palace. We are overlooking the three great states. And the three kingships are overlooking the three great states. Here's our weather report. Look out the window. <laughs> we have a high of 36. And icy spots. Okay, careful when you're driving out there, folks. It's not, it's not good. Okay, so hey, you know what that means? It's a warm day. It's a warm day. It's great camping weather. Get out and unlock some epigenetics. Take your kids out. Be safe. Get some down synthetic or synthetic gear. Get a nice MMS system. Get out there. Breathe some fresh air, folks. Get out of the matrix. Yes, we have to use the matrix to go and fight evil and, the, and the, the demons who are there trying to disinform people and disempower them and to create, create slaves. But in the end, you have to also stay sane. You have to also stay unplugged. Don't live all day on your iPhone. Don't live all day on your iPad. Don't live all day on your TV flicker, flicker rates. Don't live all day on GMO foods. Eat healthy foods. Exercise. Empower yourself. Train with the peace, police, peace, militia. Do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu <laughs> and mixed martial arts. If you got women in your family, empower those women to be able to have the power and nationwide power so that the criminals fear every single woman, man, child who, who, is, who has a legal concealed carry permit. We have to get back to freedom, folks. We have to get back to liberty. We have to get back to the gifts God gave us. We have to get back to exposing darkness. We have to get back to the light. As if we finish that scripture, it says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Arise from the dead. You are not only, those who are, uh, who are those are people who are not awakened, are not only awakened, they're dying. They're dead. They're the walking dead, folks. And as you spread this broadcast, as you share this information, as you go out and speak and empower yourself to speak out against evil, speak out against our, you become also a light. And we pray that the, Christ, the light of Christ will be shining through you until the rest of the earth. Going to all corners, and Matthew 24 said, Preach this gospel of the kingdom, and the end will come. This is the Kingdom Report, reporting from the Chanigung Palace. And we'll see you tomorrow, 5 a.m. sharp, with our weather report and our dates right at the beginning. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>